Listen, complete the numbered spaces in the identification form in the book. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 5. Platinum Card Service, Rebecca speaking. How may I help you? I've got a few problems with my credit card account. OK. What is your credit card number? Mm, let's see. It's here somewhere. Ah, here it is. Can I just take the card number, please? Yes, it's 6992... 6992... 3443... 3443... 1147... 1147... 8921... 8921. Right. Can I just check that? Um, 6992... 3443... 1147... 8921. That's it. And your name? Carlos de Silva. I just need to check a few details for identification and security, if you'll bear with me. That's OK. And what's your postcode? SE18PB. SE18PB. That's it. Foxhall Close, London? Yes, that's right. And the house number? Um, 43. And can you give me your date of birth? 13th of the 7th, 63. And one further check, if I may. Can you give me your mother's maiden name? Yes, it's Moore. Is that M-O-O-R-E? Yes, that's it. Before the caller and operator continue their telephone conversation, look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen to the next part of the conversation and answer questions 6 to 10. For these questions, there are three alternatives, A, B and C. Decide which alternative is the most suitable answer and circle the correct letter. Yes. Now, can we get on with this? Yes, sir, certainly. I'm sure you'll appreciate that all these checks are necessary for security reasons. So, what exactly is the problem? Problems. OK. Well, first, um, your computer seems to have gone mad. I sent you £500, and on the statement for the account, it shows that I only paid 300 Yes. The account does only show £300 was paid. Well... I paid the £500 in at the bank, and I have my receipt, and my bank statement shows that £500 has been taken from my account. Oh, I see. What I'll do is check with the bank and see what they say. OK. You said there was something else? Yes, as if that wasn't enough. My account shows that £107.27 was paid to a company called Pan Express. I don't know who this is. Let's have a look. Well, it is genuine. I can assure you it's not mine. It was made on the evening of the 12th of May. Maybe it's a restaurant bill you forgot about? There's no way that... Oh, oh wait, hold on. Yes. Oh, uh, it's OK. I've just realised what it is. It is a restaurant bill. Um, the name of the company is different from the name of the restaurant. My mistake. I'm sorry. 
That's okay. Was there anything else? I don't know if I dare. What is it anyway? Um. Well, it's um. The amount of interest seems to have gone up. Hmm. If you look at your statement for April, you'll see that the rate went down from sixteen point two seven percent to fourteen point nine nine percent that month. Oh yes, you're right. Was that everything? Yes, basically it is. Okay. And can you check my payment? Oh yes, I'll do it. Can I phone you back? I'll be at home for the next two hours. I have to leave at eleven. Right. What's your number? O two o seven nine eight nine seven one eight two. Hold on. O two o seven nine seven nine. No, it's seven nine eight nine, and then seven one eight two. So it's o two o seven nine eight nine. Seven one eight two. Yes, that's it. Okay, I'll phone you straight back. Thanks. Bye. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. Part two. You will hear a library assistant talking about the library she works in. You now have thirty seconds to read questions eleven to fifteen. Hi, can I help you? Um, yes, I wanted to join the library. Okay. First of all, let me show you round the library and explain a few things for you. Okay. Now we're here at the main entrance. You can see the reception, which is where you bring back and take out books, and also we can order books and answer your questions there. Uh huh. Next to the reception, where you can see those old desks, is where we keep the magazines because you can sit down and read there. They're divided into sections for sciences, geography, arts, etc. Then, at the back of the library, you can see the section for old books. Next to that is where the books proper start. That used to be the science section. But now on those shelves, you'll find the art section. We had a big reorganisation in the summer, which I think has made it clearer.、Oh. <laughs> the numbering is standard, so you should be able to find what you want quite easily. However, if you can't find something, it probably means it's been borrowed. Okay, then in the corner next to the reference section. Is where we thought it was quietest, and away from the phones and printers and things. So we've put the study desks there. They all have computer access if you need it for your laptop. No. We do ask that you don't just read magazines there, though. Okay.、Uh, then there's the reference section, where you can look up the files. Then, as we come back to the main entrance. Is the next section where we used to have the languages, 
it got very busy and noisy. So when we moved everything around, we decided to put the law books here. Also, because it's a smaller section, it fits quite well here. Ah. OK, then. We're back at the main entrance. Over there, by reception, there's a door that goes to the extension. And we have further sections, such as languages and study desks through there. So you could have a look round when we've finished. Then, just between reception and the door here, is where we decided to put the computers. But the computer magazines are in the magazine section. As we found, too many went missing here. <laughs> OK, is that everything? You now have 30 seconds to read questions 16 to 20. That's great, thanks. Can you just tell me a bit about borrowing and the rules and whatever? Of course. Over the last two months, we've been introducing a new system for this, and you can now take books out for six weeks. That's generally enough for most people. We usually get books back within 30 days. Of course, you may decide to renew the period. You used to have to come in to get the book stamped because we don't like doing it over the phone as there's no record of it. But now you can do all that via email. Oh. If you do forget to renew, then we do make a charge, I'm afraid. That helps our costs, of course, but we do insist on it. The good news is that there is only one charge. I know some libraries charge one pound for one week and then it goes up with each week it's late. We ask for one pound fifty, as we think that's high enough to stop people being overdue. <laughs> the other thing you may want to know is what you do about books that are not on the shelves. We do have a system for reserving them. All you have to do is fill in a yellow form behind those blue ones on the desk uh -huh. and give it to someone at reception. We'll let you know when it comes in. Also, sometimes you will need a journal article that we don't have but can get from other libraries. So we offer an ordering service if you need it. Now, if you'd like to fill in this form here... That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a business study student called Sam talking to his tutor about an IT project he is going to do for a local company called Turner's. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now listen and answer questions 21 to 26.
Hello, Sam. Come in and sit down. Thanks. You're here to discuss your company-based IT project, aren't you? Yes. I've been to see the manager, and he's given me a lot of ideas about projects that the company would find useful. But I wanted to ask your opinion about them before I choose one. Yes, that's fine. Now, this company's called Turner's, isn't it? That's right. It's a small engineering company. They make machine components for trade use. They're well established. They started in 1976, but they're a bit old fashioned. Okay. And what kind of projects did Turner's suggest you could do for the company? Well, they want some improvements made to their customer database. Uh, the one that they've got at the moment isn't very useful in some ways. I had a quick look at it. Uh, mm. That would be a very straightforward project, and it'd be simple enough to evaluate, but I don't think you'd get enough out of a project like that. You wouldn't learn anything new. Well, another project they suggested is to do with their online sales catalogue. At the moment, customers can look at their products, but they can't actually order them online, which m must affect their competitiveness. But I said I thought it would take too long. It's quite a big task. You're right. It's too much for the time you've got. It's a pity, though. Then they want some help with their payroll system. At the moment, the way they calculate pay involves a lot of manual accounting. I suggested they could have a system where employees register electronically when they arrive and leave work, so the hours they do could be transferred automatically. Hmm. I think you'd get a lot out of a project like that. It would extend your skills, but it wouldn't be too much to take on. A student did something similar a couple of years ago, but this is slightly different. Hmm. Well, then they need help with their stock inventory. They do everything manually. Really? <laughs> yes, and it takes so much time. Ugh. It's probably very inaccurate, too. An electronic inventory would probably be the biggest single benefit for the company. I'm surprised they haven't had it done before. I know. Then they wanted to improve their internal security. The manager had visited other companies where the staff use uh, swipe cards to access various areas of the building. It sounded useful, but the trouble is I'm not really sure how to do it. Well, I think you're right in that assessment. At the moment, it's probably a bit beyond your level of knowledge. Is that all? Just one more. Customer service. They want to be able to collect feedback from their customers in a more systematic way. At the moment, it's a bit of a mess, and they probably lose business as a result. Would that involve you going to see customers at their own premises? Because in that case, you might have to do a fair amount of traveling, and that would incur expenses that haven't been agreed with these companies. I never thought of that. Well, it might not be a problem, but it's something that needs clarifying. Well, I hope that's been helpful in narrowing down the options. Yes, it has. Thanks. I'll be able to make a decision now. But while I'm here, can I talk to you about coursework? Sure. Now you have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 27 to 30. I'm not very happy about the way our group assignment is working. There are some problems. Oh dear. Are people just not getting on with each other? That's the worst thing. Actually, we're all friends. It's not that. But when we're having a discussion about the assignment, one or two people end up doing all the talking and the rest don't say anything. It's... A bit frustrating because we need plenty of debate. Well, that's a common observation. You're studying in a group with people from all over the world, and you all have your own ways of participating. In some places, students are more used to listening than talking, and vice versa. Mm, I suppose you're right. I'll try to remember that. Does everyone pull their weight as far as sharing the workload is concerned? I'd say they do, yes, and... Our group elected uh, a leader. She's very good at making sure no one's overloaded. But personally, I feel that there are just too many of us in the group. Whenever we try to arrange a meeting, there's always at least one person who can't make it. It's not anyone's fault. It's just that 
We've all got slightly different timetables. Well, I'm glad you've talked to me about it. Feedback is always useful. Is there anything else you're concerned about? Uh, there are a couple of problems with lecturers that, that all the students are talking about. Hmm. Last semester, we had negative feedback about the way lectures were organized. There were several occasions when the wrong room had been booked or the same room had been booked twice, that sort of thing. Is that still a problem? That hasn't happened at all as far as I know. Oh, good. It's sorted out then. But I don't know the reason, but some of the staff often turn up late, so we miss 10 or 15 minutes of our lecture time. It might be because they've been copying handouts for students. I think there's a queue for the machine sometimes. Well, I'll look into that. Thank you for telling me. Anything else? <laughs> the other thing is that it can be very difficult to get to see a lecturer individually. They're all very supportive and friendly when you do manage to find them, but often they're not in their office, even at times when they're meant to be available for consultation. Okay, that's helpful. Now, before you leave... Uh, let me... That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. In this section, you'll hear an interview on IQ tests. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Mrs. Kellerman, a specialist in child psychology, is interviewed by Bridget. Mrs. Kellerman, why is it that some children perform much better than others at school? Obviously, it can't be denied that certain children are brighter than others, but it's not as simple as that. A lot of emphasis is placed on intelligence measured by tests, so-called IQ tests, which only measure certain types of intelligence, such as basically linguistic and numerical skills, or reading and mathematics to put it plainly, which is unfortunate because some children are bound to suffer. A good example was a friend of mine's son who was kept out of the top class at school because of his average IQ. That's around 100. His father, though he had no idea his son was going to be an architect, always said he was a clever child. Apparently, he was able to picture things in his mind and draw accurately at a very early age. The point is that his university life might not have been so difficult if his ability had been recognized sooner. What you're saying, then, is that some children have abilities that are not easy to measure that aren't appreciated by many schools. Precisely. And if these schools are not spotted sufficiently early, they cannot be developed. That's why, in my view, there are so many unhappy adults in the world. They are not doing the things they are best at. What are those other kinds of intelligence? How can we recognize them in our children? Well, take musical talent. Many children never get the chance to learn to play an instrument, but while they might not become great artists or composers, 
they may get a lot of pleasure and satisfaction. Musically gifted children are fascinated by all kinds of sounds, car horns, animal noises, and so on, and they can easily recognize tunes and sing them in key. How can a parent encourage them? Sing to them and teach them new songs. Buy a piano or even a cheap instrument such as a recorder. If you can afford it, send them to music lessons as soon as possible. Play recordings of different instruments to them. What about a child who is good at sport? Could that be described as a form of intelligence? Most certainly, we psychologists call it motor or bodily intelligence. These children move gracefully and handle objects skillfully. A child who finds it easy to take things apart and use various tools may well become an engineer with the right encouragement. We should give them models to make and take them to science museums. However, unless these children are also good with words and numbers, they will probably not do well in school examinations. Is there anything a parent can do to help in this case? Yes, it may be worth spending money on private lessons, but you know, hardly anyone is good at everything. In my opinion, a child should be judged on his individual talents. After all, being happy in life is putting your skills to good use, no matter what they are. That is the end of part four.